Welcome to Learner's Planet, my dear children. Children, this is session three about adaptations. How plants survive. In the previous session, we studied about different types of plants, and we also studied about many features of plants that are found on land. So let's continue with other features of the plants that are found on land. So we will start with the plants that are present in swampy areas. Children, what are swampy areas? Yes, places where the soil is very sticky and clay are called marshy or swampy areas. As you can see here, the soil becomes very sticky and clay in such areas and plants are not able to grow here. Why they are not able to grow? Because the soil here is very sticky and very clay. So we can say that the places where the soil is very sticky and clay are called as marshy or swampy areas. So children, it becomes very difficult for the plants to grow here because air cannot reach the roots. Right? Hence, we can say that plants that grow here on the swampy areas give out breathing roots to absorb air. So children, what are breathing roots? Yes, breathing roots are those roots that stick out of the water and have pores or holes in them for the exchange of gases. So children, always remember that the places where soil is very sticky and clay are called marshy or swampy areas. And because of this, it becomes very difficult for the plants to grow here because air cannot reach the roots. Hence, plants that grow here give out breathing roots to absorb air because breathing roots have pores or holes in them for exchange of gases. For example, this is a picture of mangroves. Children, mangroves have breathing roots to absorb air. As you can see here, the breathing roots are sticking out of the water and they have holes in them for the exchange of gases. So we can say that mangrove type of plants are present in swampy areas or the marshy areas. Children, now we will study about another feature of the plants that are found on land that are plants on sea coast. Children, palms grow in coastal areas. Why? Because they can survive in salty water and they prefer areas of high rainfall. So as you can see in the picture, this is a picture of such a coastal area where the water is very salty and there is very high rainfall. So palms are such plants that grow in the coastal areas. That means such type of areas because they survive in salty water and they prefer areas of heavy or high rainfall. So children, we can say that the seeds of such plants are scattered by water and then only they grow. For example, this is the 
coconut tree. So children, palms such as coconut grow in coastal areas because they can survive in the salty water and the preferred area of high rainfall. And the seeds of such plants are scattered by water. So children, I hope you are clear with all the features of plants that are found on land. And now we will study about aquatic plants. So we studied about terrestrial plants and now we will study about aquatic plants. Children, what are aquatic plants? Yes, the plants that live in water are called aquatic plants. So you can see in the picture itself that these are all aquatic plants because all of these plants live in water. So we can say that aquatic plants live in water. So children, aquatic plants are divided or we can say that they are of three kinds. Yes, the first one is floating plants, second one fixed plants and third one underwater plants. So children, aquatic plants are of three kinds that are floating plants, fixed plants and underwater plants. So now let's study about each of them in detail. So now we will start with the floating plants. So children, what are floating plants? Why are they called as floating plants? Yes, stems of these plants are very light and spongy so that they can float on water. As you can see in all the pictures that the plants are very light and spongy and they can float on water. So children, these are called as floating plants. Let's see some other examples. Yes, duckweed. Duckweed and water hyacinth are called as floating plants. You can see here, these are the plants present on the surface of water. And these are also the plants which are present on the surface of water. Right? So, duckweed and water hyacinth are the examples of floating plants. Ok children? Because they keep floating on water. Now, we will study about fixed plants. Children, these plants have their roots fixed to the bottom of the pond. As you can see in the picture, these are some plants which have roots fixed to the bottom of the pond. Right? So we can say that they have thin, long and hollow stems to reach the surface of the water. As you can see in the picture, these are light, they are spongy and they are thin, they are long and have hollow stems to reach the surface of the water. So, leaves of these plants are broad and flat. So, you can see the leaves of these plants, right? They are broad and flat with a waxy coating on the surface. Why they have waxy coating on the surface? Yes, to prevent them from rotting, right? So, always remember that fixed aquatic plants are broad and flat. The leaves of such plants are broad and flat with a waxy coating to prevent them from rotting.
and they remain fresh all the time. So children, the examples of fixed plants are mortar lily and lotus. So you can see in the picture, right? Water lily and lotus are some of the examples of fixed aquatic plants. Children, you will also surprised to know that the hollow stems of lotus are called as Kamal Kakri. Why they are called as Kamal Kakri? Yes, because they are hollow. The stems are hollow and in Hindi we call lotus as Kamal. So the hollow stems of lotus are called Kamal Kakri. Right? And they are actually eaten as vegetable too. So you can see here the hollow stems. Right? This is a hollow stem of lotus. Right? And they are chopped down and eaten as vegetable also. Right? So always remember this. So Kamal Kakri and Lotus are the example of fixed aquatic plants. Now we will study about underwater plants. So children, these plants grow under the water. That is under the water surface. Very deep inside the ocean or deep inside the water. And they have thin and narrow leaves without any stomata. Right? So always remember that the underwater plants grow under the water surface. That is why they are named as underwater plants. And they have thin and narrow leaves without any stomata. Do you remember what is stomata? Yes. The tiny pores or the tiny holes which are present on the surface of leaf of a plant which helps in respiration. Okay children? So always remember that underwater plants do not have any stomata. So we can say that the leaves absorb carbon dioxide and oxygen gas directly through their surface because they have, they do not have any stomata. So the leaves will directly absorb carbon dioxide and oxygen gas through their surface. So children, let's see some example of underwater plants. Children, tape grass and pond weed are some example of underwater plants. As you can see here in the picture, this is the picture of a tape grass and this is the picture of the pond weed. You might have seen pond weed floating on the pond. Right? So, these are examples of underwater plants. So children, now let's study about another category of plants and that are insectivorous plants. So children, why are they called insectivorous plants? Yes, some plants are carnivorous in nature. You know carnivores? Right. They eat other plants and animals. Right? So these are such plants which are carnivorous in nature. And that is why they are called as insectivorous plants. Now why they are exactly called as insectivorous plants? Let us know about it. Yes, they are carnivorous in nature and they are called as insectivorous plants because their leaves are modified 
to trap insects. So you can see in the picture, this is a picture of the example of insectivorous plant. And you can see here, yes, this is insect. So the leaf of this plant traps the insects, right? You can see that the leaf of this plant is bending and trying to trap the insect and they eat insects and that is why they are called as carnivorous plants. So children, these are some examples of insectivorous plants. We can call them as insectivorous or carnivorous. Children, this is, these are the pictures of Venus fly trap. These both are the pictures of Venus fly trap. So children, Venus fly trap and picture plant are the insect trappers and hence they are called as insectivorous plants. As you can see in the picture that this kind of plant eat insects. Right? You can see here this is a black color insect. This is a brown colored insect. Right? And this is Venus flytrap. So children, these plants have the capability to trap the insect. And so they are called as insect trappers or insectivorous plants. Like Venus flytrap. So children, they also have long hair along the edges like Venus fly, fly trap and pitcher plant. They are the insectivorous plants. So they have long hair like projections along the edges. When an insect touches the hair of that insectivorous plant, the leaf of that plant snaps shut trapping the creature inside and it eats them. So they are called as insectivorous. For example, Venus flytrap has leaves which are like boxes with hinges. You can see here, I have marked this. Yes, these points are called hinges. Right? So they trap the insects through hinges. Children, in the same way, the another insectivorous plant, that is pitcher plant. So in the pitcher plant, the leaves are in the form of pitcher with a lid to cover the mouth of the pitcher. So this is a pitcher. You can see this plant that it has the form of a pitcher with a lid, with a lid to cover the mouth of the pitcher. So, we can say that they also trap insects and eat them. So, they are also called as carnivorous or insectivorous plants. So, children, I hope that you are clear with the aquatic plants. Now, let's move on to the another category of plants which are called as non-green plants. Children, there are some plants like mushrooms and moles which are non-green in color. But why they are non-green in color? Have you ever gave a thought? No? Yes, they are green in color because they do not have chlorophyll. So the plants which do not have chlorophyll are called as green plants. Sorry, they are called as non-green plants. So the plants which have chlorophyll are green plants and the plants which do not have chlorophyll are called non-green plants. So mushroom and moles are the examples of non-green plants. As you can see in the picture, they are orange in color but not green in color. Children, so such non-green plants cannot make their own food. 
बिकॉज दे नीड क्लोरोफिल फॉर प्रिपेयरिंग देयर ओन फूड बट दे डू नॉट हैव क्लोरोफिल सो दे के नॉट मेक देयर ओन फूड एंड दे यूजली एब्सॉर्ब फूड फ्रॉम अदर डेड प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स and that is why they are called as saprophytic plants so children always remember that the plants that cannot make their own food and absorbs the food from other dead plants and animals not live dead plants and animals are called as saprophytic plants so children always remember this that these are saprophytic plants mushrooms molds and toadstools these are all saprophytic plants so children you might have seen mold on the bread slice when bread slice is kept for many days so you can see molds developing on bread slice and they are called as saprophytic plants okay children now let's move on to the next topic that is useful plants children you must be knowing that plants are very useful to us but how they are useful to us yes every day we use things that are made from plants in some form or the other form right so let's start and learn about the plants that are very useful to us yes children we all depend on the plants for food right like fruits vegetables oils sugar cereals pulses nuts spices etc are all plant products right so we are depending on plants for food because we eat almost all these kinds of food every day yes then tea coffee cocoa beans all these are also obtained from plants only right so you might have seen your father and mother having tea or coffee every day right so from where does from where do we obtain these yes we obtain these from plants children sugar cane can also be used to make alcohol in many countries alcohol is used as a fuel and many cars can run on alcohol instead of petrol so children sugar cane plants should also be grow so we should also grow sugar cane plants due to which we can make alcohol and this alcohol can be used in cars or other vehicles instead of petrol children let's see some other benefits yes plants are also helpful to us in other ways like soaps and shampoos have vegetable oils which are also obtained from plants right so the soap and the shampoo which you use every day have vegetable oils in them and perfumes in them right that is why you are able to smell it smells so sweet and so nice because they are obtained from the plants the other use of the plants is for plant fibers the plant fibers like cotton and jute are used to make cloths carpets sacks and ropes right so they are also used to make sacks in which we can we fill rice and wheat in kilograms right so plant fibers like cotton and jute are also used to make children 
cotton and jute plants are also very helpful to us right for making clothes carpets sacks and ropes they are also useful in other ways like flax flax is another type of fiber that we get from plants right so children we can say that this is flax flax is a type of fiber that we get from the plants children the other benefits are that the juice of acacia tree that is kikar is used to make gum and this gum is used at many places right you use it for sticking the paper for art and for craft right so we get gum or we obtain gum from the juice of this acacia tree which is also called as kikar children there are other plants like coconut plant that gives us coconut oil and they also provide us with coconut water as well as a fruit to eat children the stems of bamboo plant are also used to make paper the hollow stem or the cane is used to make baskets huts mats furniture etc the juice from the rubber tree is also used to make rubber for the tires then the trunks of trees such as shisham teak sal etc give us wood for making furniture doors windows chairs etc so we can also say that shisham teak sal are such important trees from which we get wood and this wood is used in making many things they are used for making furniture doors windows etc children paints also contain some substances that are obtained from plants so you can see here you might have seen your home decorated or painted with beautiful paints but from where do we get these paints yes we obtain the paints from plants because they contain some substances that are obtained from plants children there are many other plants like eucalyptus tulsi cinchona neem etc that provide us with important medicines right so you can see in the picture right so children we can also say that many plants like eucalyptus tulsi cinchona neem give us important medicines and dyes from plants are also extremely popular like henna that is mehndi so henna leaves are used for decorating hands you can ask your mother that what is mehndi you will come to know that henna leaves are used for decorating hands right so children i hope that you are clear with this session and you enjoyed this session about learning of various types of plants and the usefulness of plants so children always keep planting trees because they are useful us in many ways so children keep planting trees and save trees till then keep enjoying and keep learning we'll meet in the next session with a new lesson